Hello everybody, thank you for watching. My name is Vegan Chris. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And this is The Bible Says We Can Eat Meat, Part 2. So if you haven't seen Part 1, you can go back and watch Part 1. I'll put a link to it in the description. But this is Part 2. A lot of the comments that I got about Part 1, I'm going to address here in Part 2. And one of the main ones was that it's the Old Testament. I was quoting things from the Old Testament, and a lot of people were saying that we don't follow the Old Testament anymore, so why are you quoting things from the Old Testament? And the point that I was making in the video is that there's a lot of things in the Bible that we don't follow anymore because they're antiquated, they're outdated, and we as a society have agreed that we're not going to follow those things anymore. Our, our humanity has stepped in, even though our religion says one thing, our humanity teaches us that certain things are not right, like slavery, and that's one of the things that I talked about. So a lot of people are saying, oh, that's the Old Testament, that's the Old Testament. And first of all, it, I find it refreshing that so many people do acknowledge the objectionable material that is in the Old Testament. Just by the fact that they're saying that's the Old Testament, they're acknowledging that there's a lot of unconscionable material in the Old Testament. So I'm glad that we're on the same page when it comes to that. But by saying it's the Old Testament and by saying we don't follow the Old Testament anymore, you know, there's a lot in the Old Testament that if you say that, if you say that we don't follow the Old Testament anymore, not only do you have to get rid of the quotes about slavery, but there's a lot of other things that you would have to also get rid of, like the Ten Commandments, which is right next to that verse about slavery. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the Ten Commandments first show up in the Old Testament. Original sin, the whole reason that humans need to be saved is in the Old Testament. So if we're going to get rid of the bad parts about the Old Testament, I mean, is that what we're doing? Are we picking and choosing? Are we getting rid of some of it, but not all of it? And if that's the case, how do we know what to get rid of? It's all up to interpretation. And this is what I'm saying. It's, a, it's better to use your humanity as a guide for how to live and, and your morals than to try to use a book from hundreds of years ago from people who didn't even know what a germ was and never saw a telescope and never saw a microscope and didn't even know what epilepsy was <laughs> you know they thought all those things were caused by demons and so they had very little knowledge it's just like when you're young you know you're born you don't know anything you have to learn you can't go off of what you believed when you were five and run your life like that now because you're much more mature you're much more intelligent you have much more knowledge. And it's the same thing with humanity. It's the same thing with society. Back then, we didn't know what caused lightning and thunder and epileptic, epileptic seizures. We didn't know what caused those things. We thought it was the demons and that God was mad at us. And that's why there were plagues and stuff like that. But that's nature. But we didn't understand nature. So we inputted our understanding into that. But, it's, but when you get older and you develop and you get better technology and you get better instruments, you start to understand nature better and you understand that God's not mad at you just because there's a lightning storm. That doesn't mean God's mad at you. Just because there's an earthquake, that doesn't mean God is mad at you. That means that that's a natural phenomenon. Those things happen. Even if you're being as good as you could possibly be, bad things still happen. That's a natural phenomenon. So Anyway, I don't want to get too far off track, but I just wanted to revisit this video because I got a lot of comments and people, and I, I just want to, wanted to address the, the most of what I was getting. Okay, so, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. But um, another thing, you know, pe again, people say that's the Old Commandment, that's the Old Commandment, or, or excuse me, the Old Testament. We, we go by the New Testament now. But um, I got to be honest with you, Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus doesn't agree that we throw out the Old Testament. Jesus says clearly in the Bible, in the New Testament, that he has come to uphold the law, not to do away with the law. I'm trying to remember the verse. Let me get the verse for you. Okay, so I have my trusty Bible here. And it is New Testament, Matthew 5, 17. So open up your Bibles. This is the King James Version, the version that most people have, especially here in America. Matthew 5, 17, chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus fulfills the law. This is the New Testament. Think not 
that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, this is clear. This is clear, guys. This is this is the New Testament. So I would be very interested to hear the comments talking about how all those bad things are in the Old Testament. No, this is the New Testament. This is Jesus speaking in red. OK, that's how you know it's him speaking. And that's what he says. I have come to uphold the law, not a scratch or tittle. Not one jot or tilt shall pass. Oh, my goodness. So this is what he's saying. And, uh, and then it goes on to say, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men, so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so I'm just saying, this is, you know, uh, for all the people that said, we don't, we don't have to follow the Old Testament. We only have to follow the New Testament. Well, Jesus himself is saying that he came to uphold every law. Every law. So that's what he says. I'm just telling you what he says. And this is why I'm saying not to use the Bible. I mean, if you get comfort from the Bible and you get comfort from going to church and you get comfort from your religion and it makes you do good things, then that's fine. But don't try to use it as a justification for your entire life to, to do bad things because that people do do that. People do do that. They use this because there's a lot of contradictions. This is not straightforward and black and white and clear. There's a lot of contradictions in this book. So that's why it's important to use your humanity to make decisions about how you live your life. Because the things that they say to do in here, if you did them, you'd find yourself in jail. <laughs> okay? You'd find yourself in jail. So you can't just go by every word in here. If you want to go in here and take out the good parts and use that to make yourself a good person, that's great. That's fantastic. But just remember, you have to use your discernment, your humanity, your power of discernment to determine like, okay, well, this is a verse that I can learn some, learn from and I can really get something from and I can grow from. But this one over here is not. I, I probably shouldn't use that. And it's your humanity that's going to tell you those things, okay? Um, but another thing, people say, oh, well, the slavery is in the Old Testament. There's no slavery in the New Testament. Well, here we are in the New Testament once again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. Ephesians 6, 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Servants be obedient to them that are your masters. Just like you would be obedient to Christ, he is saying be obedient to your masters on earth according to the flesh. Here, here it is right in the New Testament. This is not Old Testament. So the New Testament is also condoning slavery. And these are the, the passages that were used to justify slavery during slave days for those hundreds and hundreds of years. Hundreds of years, guys, because of this. It's the same thing that we're doing to animals we used to do to people because people didn't understand the difference between their religion and their humanity. Use your religion to get good things from, fine, but also use your humanity to understand when you, your religion is telling you to do something wrong. Okay, Morality is doing what's right no matter what you're told. Religion is doing what you're told no matter what's right. And so you want to do what's right no matter what you're told. And that's your humanity. That's your morality. That's where it's come. That's universal morality. OK. And it applies to animals. It applies to animals. Animals have feelings. Animals have rights. We don't have to eat them. There's plenty of vegans out there who don't eat them. Millions of people out there who don't eat animals and are thriving. And in fact, are healthier than those that do eat animals because heart disease is the number one killer among humans and uh, or at least among Americans. And um, atherosclerosis, the hardening of the arteries because of our diet, you know, that comes from meat and dairy. It doesn't come from plants and vegetables. It does not come from fruits and vegetables. Atherosclerosis, which is the plaque in your arteries that causes strokes and heart attacks and all those things, the number one killer, our number one killers do not come from plants and vegetables. That stuff comes from eating 
cholesterol that is in meat and dairy. And so we are not carnivores. If we were carnivores, we could eat that stuff and not get heart disease. <laughs> okay? But we're herbivores, and when an herbivore eats like a carnivore, they do so to their own detriment, and it comes in the form of debilitating diseases like the chronic diseases that plague our society every single day. So, we didn't understand those things back when this book was written. And this is, this. by the way, guys, this book is copies of copies of copies. Okay, the Bible was compiled by finding little pieces and putting them together and then people copying them over and over again. And back when this was a, a, a first started happening in the year, I don't know, 70, <laughs> year 70 according to our calendar, you know, there were no copy machines. Okay, there wasn't even electricity, so they had to do these copies by candlelight. So you have scribes copying every word over and over again. They made a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of interpretations, and all those things. Before copy machines came along, that's the way that it was done. And so the book we have now is vastly different from what was written way back then, and we don't even know what was written way back then. Um, you know, it's just copies of copies, so we can only guess. I mean, just Play a game of telephone one time around in five minutes. You're going to see how that message changes from the beginning to the end. Here we're talking about hundreds of years, guys, over a thousand years of that game of telephone. So the message has been distorted many, many times. So we don't know what originally happened. And that's just a fact. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to upset anybody. But this is just the way that it is. By the time this book gets to our hands in 2020, <laughs> well, by the time it got to our hands, when copy machines were invented, it had been interpreted and transcribed and changed so many times that we don't know what the original says. Okay? And that's just the way that it is. So I just wanted to make another video highlighting that, yes, the Bible does say that we can eat meat, but it also says a lot of other things that we don't do anymore because we know better. And eating animals is one of those things that we haven't really got to yet, just like for the 400 years of slavery, you know, we didn't, it took us a long time to get to freedom. It took a long time, even though there were good people back then, but they were being misled. And knowledge is a slow moving beast. It takes a long time to, to go through the people and, and for people to understand humanity and morality. It takes a long time, especially when you have the people at the top telling them things that are in here. And if you can't read or write, like a lot of people back then could not do, then you just listen to what the people at the top said. So, anyway, I hope this cleared up some of the confusion that I may have caused. And I'm not a perfect theologian, but I can read. I have common sense. I mean, I know a little bit about history. So, it's quite obvious that things change with information. When you have information, it changes behavior. If I had the information that there was a million dollars sitting outside my door right now, guess what? My behavior would change like that. I would get up, I wouldn't care about this video, I'd run right out there and grab that money. Because that information would change my behavior. When I understand that there's a lot of contradictions in here, and there's a lot of things in here that we used to do that we don't do anymore because of our humanity, then that again it's going to change my behavior now i'm not going to do it you know there's a lot of people that take this book word for word and they do things like handling snakes i don't know if you've ever heard of the appalachian snake handlers but well, you can look that up on youtube and find out about people that take the passages in here literally and the one the passage that says that they can take up serpents and not get hurt they take that literally and they have snakes and they perform rituals with snakes and a lot of times they get bitten and die they use poisonous snakes OK, and they say, well, it was my time to die. And so I died. But really, if you weren't handling the snake, you wouldn't have died by a snake bite. You know, if you handle snakes frequently, you're going to increase your chances of dying by a snake bite. It's not because you're a bad person. It's because you're handling snakes all the time. <laughs> OK, that's science. That's science. You don't have to pray about that. You just have to know that if you're going to continuously handle po poisonous snakes and jump around with them and hold them close to your face and dance with them and shake them all around, Every now and then, you're going to get bit. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And um, that's all I got to say about this one. Uh, and I'm going to make more videos about this because there's a lot to be said. And there's a lot of people that 
They think, well, if this says we can eat meat, we can eat meat, and that's it. Just like what originally started prompted me making the first video, I, I was I ran into a girl who said that, and I said, you know what, I gotta make a video about this. So anyway, I'll keep them coming, guys. Thanks for watching. I love you guys so much. I truly do. We are at 1,600 subscribers, and we got to get to 1,700 so we can have a party. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys. Much love. Much love.